Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Summer of Swayze. Man, I'm letting my hair down, Jabes. Come on. Come on. What do you think of this? Of which? Everything that's going on. I just got, I just got back from surfing right now. Uh-huh. Um, again, probably going to go rob a bank later. What do you think of this? Oh, okay. Bio con Dios. The Swayze thing? Yep. It's cool. It's yeah, cool. it is, isn't it's it? It's cool. It's cool. How long um, are we going to say, are we going to be saying all the stuff? Um, Viacondias, I don't really have a timetable. Timeline on yeah, that? Yeah, okay. I don't, I don't want to put restrictions on me. Um, you know, myself as a human and as a, as a man. Right. Of, okay. of how long, no. you know, I'm going to do something or not do something. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you might have to get used to this. It might be a while. Yeah, so how long is it going to be? So like every time you wake up and you're doing the like Swayze thing. Five ta- yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of quoting Swayze mm-hmm. from Point Break specifically, it, you know, as soon as you wake up and, you yeah. know, in yeah, my yeah, face. yeah. yeah. How long, and we don't know with that either. When are the dance classes okay. going to end? You know, I've been doing a lot of dance classes. His mom was a choreographer. So, right. Kind of brushing up on those. Um, my ball shuffle change. A lot of Cincinnati's up in this motherfucker. God, he was a dainty guy, wasn't he? He was. He was, he was a you, powerful man. It'd be interesting to see you do the same moves ah, as old sways. Boy. Just twinkle toes. He was yeah. so light on his feet. He really was. Because he weighed, you know, he was just a tiny little thing. He weighed about 135 wet. I would say, yeah. Wet. Sure. <laughs> and that is wet. Uh, speaking of wet, holy shit. This heat wave, Jabes. I know. My God. Everybody keeps, you know, posting this shit of like, oh, the South is going through this crazy heat wave. The, the Southeast breaking records. It is Balsamic out here today, but this feels this is summer. Like, what are you talking about? It, like, this, this is, this is, is what summer it is. pretty quickly, though. So we've we've I broken guess, yeah. for the last three days. We've broken the records here in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. Now, luckily, we have the beach to dip our dick into, which is nice. Dip our dick into, and then people know about the heat and humidity here. So every place that you go into, very cold. Yeah, very cold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, lots of pools, lots of pool time. Uh, everyone kind of understands how to do the heat I'm a, here. I'm a gold bond guy. I GB up every day in the summer. I'm a big gold bond guy. I wish they were a sponsor. I'm going to look into camera. If you're not subscribing to the show on YouTube, do it. I'm going to look into the camera and say this, gold bond. I am probably your best customer ever. I cherish you. You really are. I will praise the name of Gold Bonds until probably till the day that I die. If there's not a like, because I'll go the big, big mugs of uh, you know the tins, if you will, of Gold Bond. I don't bottles. Bottles sounds weird. Bottles. Yeah, I, like it's about as it's about the size of my laptop. That's the Gold Bond I get. You know, mm. and I start off my 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 year like that. Probably go through about two of those a year, right? Right. Go to roll down to Costco, get a nice big tub of Gold Bond, and just dip my balls in it, you know? Okay. And I go, because look, there's two, if you're a man out there in this world, and this is for men and women, there's two, there's two people in this world, two sets of men in this world, right? You're either the yellow bottle or you're the green. Now, the green is a cooling sitch, right? No, they're, they're both cooling sitches. Oh, well, then what's the difference? The green is like double the strength where you're just, you're in a fucking igloo down there. 
Oh, I double mean, the iciness. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. As soon as I call it, I call it angel powder. Just as soon as that angel powder kisses your nuts, uh-huh. I would say with the green, you got about a good nine seconds before you're like, By oh. Cooling, I mean, like there's oh. a minty type situation going on. It How dissolves I- into your ball skin uh-huh. and you are on another planet. My man, I mean, it is whew, the first time I, the first time I had it um, was shocking. I was like, oh, my God, I, like I didn't think it was going to go away. It was like sticking your tongue on a, on a light post, you know, in the winter. Oh, where you're yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, hey, yeah. you know, because they give you the, the, the warning of like, hey, man. I don't think you should use the green. Like, <laughs> really? I'm like, yeah, I can tell you. I, so I can say my first introduction to Gold Bond. Here's how much I love Gold Bond. Again, not a sponsor, but if they want a sponsor. Sign up. I will sell fucking 10,000 pounds of that shit a month on here. I love it. I love it. The very first introduction I had to Gold Bond. Please. Yeah, regale It's a great. Yeah, Will. It's a great story, Jabes. Um, At Ohio State's bouncer, hot as fuck in the summers there. As everybody's like, oh, man, Ohio, the weather sucks there in the, in the, in the winters. It does. In the summers, it is brutally hot as well. And so I'm out there, and you're like, man beef this right because we'd, we'd, we'd wear jeans and kind of like a collared shirt we had to keep it kind of classy right it was a kind of like a polo type sit short sleeves right you know but nonetheless collared and it was just like all right cool it had a thing on it and there was a guy that i worked with um who was like 10 years older than us the guy's name was hell yeah that's, a, that's all we knew him as is hell yeah and i was like man why, why do I, why do they call this guy hell yeah and he's like as always says hell yeah Hell yeah. So every single answer was hell yeah. Okay. And um, so anyways, they, him, hell yeah, and another guy come out of the, the bathroom. I like that, hell yeah. Yeah, and I'm like. It's and I, Sandlot. Yeah. And I, 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 I'd said to him, because um, they looked refreshed, and I was like, why the fuck are you, you two so chipper right now? It's about a hunch on the, the old thermoms right now. Like. It's a hundo. It's a lot of abbreviation. It's a hundo on the In fucking thermometer. Sentence, yeah. And I was like, why are you guys smiling? We're, I'm, we're about to go into the fucking Nile here. Um, right. And they were like, oh, man. Gold bond, son. And I was like, what the fuck is gold bond? And they were like, dude, you don't know what gold bond is? I was like, I've never heard of gold bond. And they were like, man. And how old are you? I, at this point, wow. I am. Yeah, yeah. I'm 19 years old, right? And... I was like, yo, what? And they were like, go in. It's on the back of the toilet. And they were like, but there's two colors. You know, there's a yellow and a green. If you've never had it before, you should start with yellow. Obviously, I'm not fucking doing that shit, right? I'm like, beef off, bro. Right. Did you get your beef off my grill, dude? No. I'll go back there and throw the green on, right? So I go in and I powder up and they were like, look, you go, you go asshole. You go taint. And you go balls, dick and balls on a day like this because all of it is too hot. And it is, you know, what's that, that swamp show on uh, Discovery Channel? Swamp people? Yeah. 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 Well, there's people living in there and you're like, God damn it. I can, you can smell them through the screen. You yeah. Know, when you watch yeah. that show, like I already know what they smell like. Mm-hmm. And it's like, ah, God mm-hmm. damn it. I want to watch this. Yeah. I already know what you smell like. I feel yeah. like you're sitting next to me. Right. I'm smelling you. So I roll back in. And, uh, you know, unzip my shit, put on. I mean, I took a big dose of powder, like way too big. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm talking fucking A-Rod on, on spring break, like that much white powder where you're like, oh, man, that's too much, dude. And I didn't know. And right. I'm just like, who gives a shit? It's baby powder, right? It's all it looks like. That's it's what baby you thought powder. It was. That's what yeah. I thought it was. Yeah. Because they were like, oh, it's, it's cooling. It's got a little cool thing to it or whatever, right? And I was like, motherfucker, it looks like baby powder. Right. This is all this is. So I go, I, I mean, it's more than, I would say probably five or six dollops if, I, if I've got to put, you know, a some, dollop number on some it. type of measurement on this, sure. right? And I go and I cup it up in there and just, you know, you could hear the, you know? Mm-hmm. It was almost like uh, you, like the noises you hear when like people are flipping pigeons down in the ghetto, like when the okay. police are coming, you know, where it's just like, yeah, yeah, it was that it was that mm-hmm. pop. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, shit. 
I get a nice, I get a nice cup of this right there. You know, sure, it's, it's gonna be an enjoyable day. I so I buckle up, uh, wash my hands. I would say all of that probably took twelve to fifteen seconds, and then it it hit, and I was like, huh. Oh, it's a little chilly. Mm -hmm. This is a little chilly, but I feel great. Right. Then that walk back from the bathroom back out to the front door where I was working, it hit. It ran. It really hit. It was so fucking frigid. And I was like, I, I'm freaking out at this point. And I'm like, oh, my God, dude. I, you think they're freezing off. You think and I'm like, like, oh, my God. And they were like, how much did you put on? And I was like, man, I was like, it was like four or five dollops like. It was a cup and it was like it was like LeBron James just chalking up before the mm -hmm. game like where you can just see it coming out of my jeans. And I was like, holy shit, man. And they were like, bro, it's going to be about an hour, man, before that 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 wow. calms down. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, no way, man. Did I was it feel like, good? It, it felt too cold, too cold. It was too much. You got to work your way up to something like that. You don't mm -hmm. just hop in right away with something like that like you really really need to work your way up to the green gold bond and i can't i look you see you there's a yellow one here mm -hmm. even i'm now i'm just like man i didn't want to like somebody else to come in a guest or somebody and be like oh shit i'm gonna throw a little bit on and then it, it ruined the party because it does ruin the party so i at this point i can't take it man i'm like 10 minutes into this and i'm and my whole entire nethers are just fucking shocked it's it's like somebody took a soldering iron down there you know when something's so cold that it becomes hot and like so oh, i start yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like my face well, starts like dry sweating. Ice. yeah my face starts sweating and i'm like <laughs> shit what the fuck am i gonna do dude i so i was like right, i gotta go back to the bathroom and they're like, what are right. you gonna do and i was like i'm gonna try to wash some of this off i took my dick and balls out and washed it off in the sink in the fucking sink Gosh, couldn't at work it, huh? couldn't handle it Wow. And I took like I took some paper towels and some other things, right? Tried to try to get rid of this. The water made it worse. Mm -hmm. Cuz it just got in there and then it gets caked up, you know? And it's just like, "Oh no, why did I do this?" And I I eventually, man, I had to go outside and just ride it out. It was about a good hour, hour and a half later. I did enjoy the rest of my evening. Um, but I like I washed my dick and balls so hard. They were all red. Like my balls were red. It was like, man, it, it, I felt like it seeped in more, you know, got into the pores, kind of like blotter acid. Mm -hmm. Or it's just like you can put it on your tongue. You can go through the eyes and make, you know, your trip faster. Right. Right. And boom, there I was. And I was like, oh, no, no. So after that, like, right. You know, it took me a good two or three days to go back to it. And once I went back to it, I went, I went and moved down to the yellow. I took, you know half the dose a quarter of the dose of of gb and then powdered up down there and i was like oh my gosh now this is refreshing now this is a nice thing and then over the summer i worked my way up to the green and that was a nice kind of graduation thing mm -hmm. you know kind of like in karate or something when they give you like a, a belt. The belt yeah, yeah. like I, I want another color like after to like graduate up to yeah like we got the gold you know and then we got the we got the green i green. want something else like a platinum like, like a, a silver yeah like a platinum gold bond you know Ooh, now what would that do it kind of stiffens it maybe a little bit or i think maybe it's just in pill form and you just put it right in your asshole and then that Ooh, spreads that out that could be nice yeah that could be nice you never know and it kind of just shuts down all those sweat glands down there almost like a temporary botox yeah but i, I do want to say this and this is this is for the audience if you're if you're a man out there and you, you want to come up and have a, a convo with me about gold bond and have Gosh, a joint yeah, experience you, don't yeah. come up to me and say that you use the fucking lotion. We're not bros. We are not bros at that point. You do not use the gold bond lotion. You only use the powder. The gold bond lotion, that shit's under your nails. I mean, oh, it's, yeah. it's everywhere. And then you try to wash that off. And it's like, dude, your taint smell is on your hands and all that shit. Mm -hmm. Like, don't, don't come up to me and say, dude, I'm a gold bond lotion guy. But they wouldn't, We're not but you bros. You don't put lotion. You don't put gold bond lotion down there do you do if you want to stay cool no so there's gold bond lotion for like elbows things like this but it's a cooling lotion so like dude yeah, when you but put you it don't on put it down there. yeah i have in a pinch i had to i know but that doesn't even make there's a sense. lot of people that do it james there's a lot of people that do it. there's a lot of people that wipe with tux and they don't have hemorrhoids just because okay. they like the cooling 
you know, sensation of the tux rather than a baby wipe. So what, okay. what am I saying to those people, Jesse? Right. Right. You know, how are we separating society anymore? Right. There's got to be rules. Yeah. Fair is fair, Billie Jean. Like, I need you on board with this. So if you're out there again, you come up to me and you're like, oh, man, I'm a big gold mine guy. I use the lotion. We're, we're not friends. We were, we were never friends and we're probably not going to be. And don't ask me to shake your fucking hand afterwards. Right. I'll give you a bash brother type sitch. You know, I'll mm-hmm. chicken wing you, but that's about it. Um, but that's what that's the heat that's been going on down here. And you saw me before we came up to do this show. It was just like, man, I got a fucking GB up. Yeah. I got a GB up. Yeah. You're like, give me a minute. Yeah. And then when you said I need the GB up, I didn't actually know how long we would be talking about GB on the, on the. Oh, oh gold bond. Yeah. 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 Gosh, that was a. Man, I'd be a great spokesman for time. it. Yeah. Wow. Gosh, it was a People, while. people need to know. It's definitely like people a, need a to longer... know. Uh, elaborate I want to be I want to become yeah. like McConaughey where I just start picking brands that I love that's and all he like does like making them weirdly cool again yeah where you're just like I mean obviously the, the Lincoln he doesn't drive a fucking Lincoln but um that's different yeah, no. but I remember when he when he got like big uh when, the, during the McConaissance he did Stetson like Stetson, 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 yeah. Stetson Cologne, and then, man. And what, then, uh, like Southern Comfort, something. Yeah, that, Southern, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, like, now was, he's doing like Wild Turkey, and you're just like, that's oh, too maybe much. Maybe it was Wild cur- Turkey, but one of those Wild Turkey's too one intense. One of those alcohols that you're just like you you always see on the meh, it's yeah. like in the well wild or whatever, turkey, and man. he like made that uh, something. It I don't didn't know. Work, I but yeah, I can't get behind the Wild Turkey shit. No, it's too no. much, man. I you show don't if you show like, up at a party with Wild Turkey, you're a fucking asshole. Yeah, I don't like the, I don't like when they try and make, you know, revamp older alcohols that we have all decided as a society is like not really that good anymore. Yeah. Things like Southern Comfort, Wild Turkey, even Jim Beam, you know, Southern Comfort, when you say it, again, that's like the swamp people, man, I can taste it. Yeah. I can fucking taste that Southern Comfort as soon as you said it. And I remember they they did a like a cherry Southern Comfort for a while, and like some girls were drinking that shit. And Do you remember like, the Soco and Lime thing? Oh yeah. So they like tried to revamp Soco and make it like a fun nope. shot that people are doing. Not a prayer, Holmes. I think that it's the kind of thing where like we've all decided that it's not that good anymore. Like don't don't make you know don't insult my intelligence by bringing back the same old fucking bottle. Yeah. That I've always seen yeah, in the yeah. corner of the dive bar, dirty, the same bottle yeah. for years. Nobody's drinking it. Don't bring that back in my face and be like, you know, hey, look at this new fun drink. Yeah. yeah and you're yeah, like, yeah. no. Uh, like the Aperol Spritz. Do you know this thing? No. It's like this hipster renaissance Aperol, which I'm sure you've seen a million times. It's up. It's it's almost like a Campari. Mm. But it's the that color, and it's always in that section right. of the dive bar where you like nobody ever will drink it, right? <laughs> Campari was a little bit too. They tried to make that a thing for a second. There was a there was a company that tried to get me to do sake in one of my movies, um, and they were like, "Hey, we'll sponsor you to do the sake," and I was like, "Cool, man." It's like there's not I don't really have like any Japanese restaurant scenes in this movie, right? And they were like. No, it's we're we're trying to make this hip and cool where you're drinking it out. And I was like, we talking about sake? Yeah, no. Sake, bro. No. And they were like, yeah, but it's this thing. Uh, ty- Taiku was the name of it. Um, and I was like, man, that is not happening, bro. Uh, I mean, I'll take your money and I'm fine with that. But like, sake. You want me to genuinely say like, oh, man. The whole... It, it was Industry. a it was a bar scene, and I, we were supposed to, you know, it was lining the bars, and then you were supposed to walk up in this scene and say it of like, "Hey, can I get, can I get a taiku?" And you're like, "What? What?" Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's a sake, but they were using it in places, bars, or restaurants that didn't have their liquor license, but it's strong enough ah. that they can make. Kind of like a, a taiku soda, and it's like <laughs> higher. It's like sake alcohol content, and has like a vodka flavor, but isn't quite vodka, so you can kind right. of get away with it. Right. But no, but no, and the whole that whole industry is so crazy to me. Like it's such a. 
I don't even know. I'm sure there is a rhyme and the reason. Liquor world? Liquor world. There's a rhyme and reason to it, but why things get hot and people use them. Marketing. Marketing, but yeah. very, very smart and strategic where it's like, you can't just be like, hey, this is cool now. Right. And even Matthew McConaughey, that wasn't working for me. It's something else, right? Where it's like, it, you literally just need to see it in a certain eye line. Every bar. Yeah. Or you need to be told that it's like the nicer version, you know? Well, working in a bar all those years, and I'm, you might be the same. Like, you ever meet the liquor reps and shit like that who come in? And, like, their placement of, of bottles is a big, big deal. And they're like, yeah, hey, man, is, that I, I want this. And, like, uh, to, to that example, you pay extra money, right, for the better placement. And in Vegas, it's it's the craziest, right? That's the oh, hardest I'm one sure. to get into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then the Super Bowl. So one of my favorite uh, vodkas is this uh, company called Deep Eddies, right? It's them and Stateside Vodka that are my, like my two favorite vodkas on the planet. Tito's is just kind of bullshit to me. It's at, it's at every bar, so it's like great if they don't have Stateside or or Deep Eddies, like whatever, right? Uh, I'll get the fucking Tito's. Um, but uh, Deep Eddies was at the Super Bowl. And I was like, how much did you fucking pay for the right. Super Bowl, dude? Right. And that was the vodka at every single stand. And I was like, wow. Yeah. Good for them. Um, but you've got to you've got to pony up. You gotta pay a lot of dollars. Liquor in particular, the whole world behind it, because obviously my best friends own a liquor company, right? Right. You have it pretty a much for of the our first best friends. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. actually have yeah. not I, best shit, friends. Shit, is there a bottle we... of it up? No. Not anymore. Um I think I probably drank it during Memorial Day. Oof. <laughs> we get fucking rocked. Um, anyways, they said that you pretty much for the first five years, you just have to put it back into marketing. Yeah. And I mean, oh, five years? Five. I was say that's pretty standard and then maybe not for five, five years. Five years. I think it's all marketing. So it's, I think you're constantly marketing, right? Like yeah, even, yeah, yes. Yeah. Even like Red Bull, seventy percent of their their re revenue goes to marketing. When I was that made me think something. Like when I was younger, dumber, even dumber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which it I know almost seems impossible, right? Yeah. What was I? Just like a one cell amoeba. <laughs> now, now, I would. You remember the milk commercial? Yeah. Yeah. Got milk. Whatever. Yeah. I was always like, when I was little, I was just like, why? Like, who is putting on the milk commercials? Like, milk as in general. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. Or like, cheese in general. Not any brand. Right. Just cheese. Cheese, yeah. And there's a whole commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D dairy products. Uh, well, I mean, it's for the government. Right. So the government does some of it and, you know. Um, wow. milk itself too is like, you know, it's healthy. You got to get people to drink milk. You got to do some form of advertising for it. You know, you can't just let it sit there and, and right. But don't the individual company, like this is how dumb it was just like, don't the individual companies do the marketing that are selling like, yeah, they do. But you know, got milk that like that campaign, the got milk campaign, like it's, you know, that's a government thing, and that helps oh, out farmers and all commercial. that. Yeah, okay. all that 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 shit. So, it's not like it's you know, all the milk people don't get together and be like, "All right, cool. How do we make this product more rad?" Got milk? I just I think just you're like... you're trying to make the nation healthier. You know, because mm. right now, let's face it, everybody's a, a goddamn dirtbag, mm. myself included. I had 58 drinks over Memorial Day weekend. It's it's rare that I've had a couple of days off and it was just like let's get let's get loose here. Right. Crushed endless Wilmington brews. Oh yeah. And uh man, my you god. You got like a case and we have no more. They're they're all gone. I mean, we had friends drinking them, but Yeah, but it was pretty much just me. And then you roll around to everybody's house parties, right? And just get cuz they've got food, they've got drinks, and they've all got specialty drinks. Right. I mean, shit. I don't. A, a buddy of ours, Joe. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Joe Monahan. He had us over at his house, and he, he is drinking this jalapeno vodka, or I'm sorry, uh, jalapeno, jalapeno tequila. Mark. Oh, tequila. Tequila, correct. And so the so, actual tequila is infused. 
Yeah, but he's just putting real jalapenos in there. Oh, yeah. So he infused it. Okay. Yes, he did it. Like, it, you, 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 nice. you, you just buy it like that. Right. So the problem with it is, is like, it's hot. It was hot as fuck. And he goes, man, these are some spicy jalapenos. And he goes, uh, the, the last batch wasn't. Well, here's the thing. So as you're drinking it, because of the, the spiciness of it, you don't know how fucked up you're getting. Because you're like, right. Ooh, Man, I got a little Ooh, spicy. All your yeah, like, yeah, spicy, it like spicy. wakes you up every time you. And drink it's in it. a margarita that's frozen, so you're like, all right, I gotta cool this off a little bit. Sure, I gotta drink let a me more. drink more. A little more, a little more. Nice. Boom, you're in again a hunch, a hundo weather out there, and I, you know, six eight later, fuck, man, I don't like. I was like, where's my driver's license? Right. No reason. I I don't need my driver's license for anything. Yeah, but you. But it was like one of those things. Asking everyone. Yeah, I was like, "Where's my driver's license?" And they were like, "You guys see my driver's license?" Yeah. I don't know. Why did you take your driver's license out? And was like into the pool. I didn't. Yeah. Didn't. I I might even have a wallet on me. Yeah. But that's you know you start to get in that blackout mode when it's that hot out. That jalapeno tequila was kicking my ass. It was like that night in Vegas. You and I went out. When I had some form of heat stroke and I knew in the <laughs> middle of it that I was talking to imaginary people well, that it was weren't a there. Combination of gummies and drinking and heat. And I just shot a movie too. I was just directing a movie at that point. And sure. it was the next night. But I remember talking to people that weren't there and mm-hmm. I and then I caught myself yep. mid sentence and I said, Oh shit. Well, we sat Those down, we went to there. Shake Shack, which you got to, you got to. By the way, there was a Shake Shack in the airport. Where? Cleveland, of Smart. all places, had a Shake Shack in it. Smart. I was like, holy shit. So Are we you went, kidding me? We went to the Shake Shack. We're getting the food. We sit down, and you're like, do you want to go back and sit with your friends? Do you want to yeah. go back over there and sit with your friends? And I was like... It's just you and just the two of us. It's been the two of us all night. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, it was like a date. Whoa. Night type of thing. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And then you. Yeah. You were like, oh, crap. All right. Yeah. OK. Yep. Kind of like I'm going to go on this ride a little bit, but don't don't like quote me, which I'm doing. Well, the heat, <laughs> the heat that night was so tremendous. That's why it reminded me of this, where it was just like, I Vegas, and you know those Vegas nights in the summer where it feels like somebody's just following you around with a blow dryer on? Oh, my God. That's what it felt like over the weekend here Unbearable. when you're not near the, the, the beach. Because we were at the beach for a couple of days, and we came back in town and partied with a bunch of neighbors and things like that at their yeah. houses. And it was just like, you know, Joe's got a, a dope-ass pool, so it was great. Yeah. But, like, man, when you're, if you're not in it, if you're not in the yeah. pool, that, when that tequila's kicking in, shit, where's my driver's license? What? Oh, man, I, that's I dumb. Mean, yeah, because you had what? gone at that point. Yeah, so I took the And they babe were like, it's probably home. in Jesse's purse or whatever. And I was like, oh, no, I took all my stuff out. Like, were you really yeah. asking for that? I, I don't know, Jesse. Oh, okay. I, like wallet, keys, phone. Like it was all a mess. Don't me. embarrass yeah. me. Yeah, I remember just getting in the car and cranking up the AC for the first time. And I was just like. Okay, now I'm starting to come back to my senses again. Yeah, it's rough. I mean, you I literally. Uh, when I first moved here, that was the most kind of disappointing thing for me. Where in the summer you can't do anything outside if your one of your feet is not in water <laughs> or like some kind of you know shade with. An outdoor AC Oof. unit or something. I don't something. know. L.A. had some hot days, man. In the not summer, like that. In the hills. Not like that. Yeah. It's not. I promise I, you, you know, it was you know not where like I, that. I, I, like, I've never blacked out unconscious of, of like a heat stroke. Okay. I, I came close once and it was in downtown L.A. shooting the movie Pool Boy. And uh, th- that was the most brutal summer I've ever been through, and I remember. Yeah, but you have to put yourself out. in those situations where you're like in the direct sun in downtown. I, I wasn't. Complete. I was. Sh- we were shooting in a warehouse, right? And it was just so goddamn hot. And well, they're they're pumping AC in there. They're those those huge things, right? Mm. And uh, if you go back and watch this movie, because a bunch of people hit me up, they said it's on Amazon Prime now, and uh, the studio put it on Amazon Prime. So I was like, all right, cool. So I checked it, and I, it, it is on there. So if you want to go watch Pool Boy Drown the Fury fucked up movie like super crazy anywho's 
my character in that, I'd shoot all my scenes in, in like one day, right? In this warehouse in downtown LA. It got to the point where and my character's wearing like a turtleneck and like a tweed jacket, St. James Street James, mm-hmm. right? It got to the point where I was just like, all right, cool, man. I'm going to cut off the sleeves underneath the jacket, right? Of this turtleneck up to the arm. Mm-hmm. Then, boom, as the day progressed, the rest of it, the rest of it. I was down to a cousin Eddie Dickey by the end of that movie nice. where it was just the turtleneck and then that square that covered up where I needed it to cover up. Yeah. And the, the, all, all of the rest of it was gone. The back, all, all of it. None of that wardrobe was usable ever again. Nice. Because it was just drenched in sweat. And I remember it was uh, Edie Patterson. Oh, her trailer just came out, by the way. It's so fucking dope. The, gem, the Righteous the Gemstones. Show start? Yeah, yeah. But the trailer for the show just, just, just started. It just started running, airing okay. on HBO. And I was like, oh, man, I'm stoked about this. It's the new Danny McBride show. Yes. Uh, the Righteous Gemstones um, about evangelists. So she was in that scene with me. We've been friends forever. And she goes, I, halfway through the day, she goes, bro, I'm going I'm to be honest, man. I don't, know, I don't know how you're even standing up right now. Like, this is crazy. And I was like. And you didn't have anywhere to go in between takes or anything? You did. But the problem is, is like, you're pumping this air in, right? And then you, you have to shut it off because of sound. So you're doing these really long takes. And like, we improv a lot, especially me and Edie like together like forget it and uh you want to get the best shit you can so it was just like all right great let's just keep going 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 and going and um you know we took a short lunch uh and tried to get because i wanted to get everybody out of there like home right. safely and all that stuff where it was just like man after a long day like that because we had a, another big day tomorrow i didn't want like the crew to be zapped or whatever and i was just like if we can make this a half day i'm gonna try to you know right like, um and I think it ended up being like an eight or nine hour day, which on set isn't terrible. You know, like it's not 14, but that that's why where I was just like, all right, I want to get these guys out of here um, yeah. safely because Jesus Christ, that movie, man, was that that was I, 2000 shot it in 2010. Um, that was the hottest summer I've ever experienced in my life was in Los Angeles then. Um, and everybody was annoyed on that thing, like where it was just like, God damn it, this is hot. And you're shooting a movie called Pool Boys. You're all outside and no one can jump in the pool. The only people that got to go in a pool Shitty. during the entire movie were two strippers. I had to pull off a stage in Northridge. They're the only ones that got to enjoy it. And they were having the time of their fucking lives. Um, but I remember Sorbos, uh, this, you know, forgive me if I've told this story, but it's awesome. There was a, a woman walking her dog uh, in this in this neighborhood we were shooting in, he comes out of his trailer, mm. and she was like, she's walking this dog, and she's super old. She goes, "Oh my god, are you are you Kevin Sorbo?" And he goes, "I am." And she goes, "I used to be the biggest fan of yours." And like again, the heat is the heat had zapped all of us during that shoot, and he just taps her on the shoulder and he goes, "You still can be." Yeah, <laughs> and walks away. Greatest line I've ever heard be. in my life, and uh, the best. best comeback of all time. Uh, I'll never forget it. But that that it was on that film, and like everybody was just like, guy. "Oh, he's hilarious! He's fucking hilarious!" But like like that kind of dry, yeah, unassuming. I talked to him uh, maybe three or four weeks ago. We were trying to get him on Drinking Bros again. He, he'd yeah. come on before. Yeah, had he? Yeah, yeah, he'd come on before and just raged, and it was awesome. Um, he went so hard on that show, and then he come. In no, he could have. Uh, he was shooting a movie at that point. But right. anyways, I think he said he's buying. He was he was telling me he was buying a place in like Florida or something. He's okay. a, he's a huge golfer. He's like one of the, okay. He he wins all those celebrity nice tournaments and things like that. He's a huge golfer, but uh, you know he's also probably wants to relax and all that other shit. And then being super right in Hollywood these days, they've pretty much. They've ostracized they've, everybody out of there. So. They've well, they've welcomed him to relax. Yeah, yeah. They've they've invited him to to to, to relax to just yeah. relax a little bit and not really be in that much stuff. <laughs> I love him though. He's one of my favorites I've ever worked with, and nobody. Oh, he's laughing all the way to the bank though, because he's doing. Uh, dude, it's crazy. He's doing all kinds of stuff. That yeah, is, yeah, it's crazy. He just. Yeah, from even from Hercules. I mean, it was oh yeah, hundred hundred million dollars probably man. because he was an EP on that too, an executive producer. Sorbo's doing just fine. By the way, I want to shout out Spindrift too. Maybe they'll come on as a sponsor. I drink this <laughs> shit all the time. Just gonna like, whoo, 
Ooh, boss. I like to shout out Bogle Wine. Yeah. Bogle Vineyards. You're a big fan of Bogle. I am. It's a good wine. It is. It is a good wine. Uh, we're look. We're just we're having some drinks Monday nights. Yeah, this is the nighttime show. It's rare for you. It is super rare for you, as you can probably tell why. And I'm glistening a little bit, even though we got the AC on the studio. It's so fucking hot, so man. Fucking it hot, is. Dude. It is crazy here. Uh, you know what else is crazy is the deals you'll get at BlackRifleCoffee.com. dot com. That was a beautiful segue. Oh, beautiful. Oh, honey, get the car. I just saw the most beautiful segue. <laughs> uh, Black Rifle honey, Coffee the brie. made with the hands of veterans. And on this Memorial Day, because we're taping this on Memorial Day, uh, go out and buy, support some veterans. Go out and buy some Black Rifle Coffee dot com. You know, sign up for Tell the Coffee Club up. of the Month program. Yeah. Say, hey, what's up, man? Say, hey, what's up, man? Say, hey, this isn't just a, a day that I rage my dick off on and do coke, you know? Yeah, with with an, one of the girls who was on Rock of Love. Yeah, lots it's more than of that. Coke. I think yeah. I, while while you're on the beaches, I'm thinking about the people who storm the beaches. Um, go to a, a veteran company and put your hands inside their coffee and let it live all over your body. Promo code Revolution, twenty percent off at BlackRifleCoffee.com. Next up, James. James, don't let the heat get to you, sister. It's a combo. It's a combination of things. Yeah, it is. Um, next up, we got ghostbed.com. Ooh, I wake up for ghostbed. Sleep so good, it sounds it's scary. Counterintuitive. But. Scary. Uh, we're going to get some good ghost beds in the new studio. I know. We're moving in the studio soon. Um, we, got two, we got two bunk beds in there in case people get black, blackout drunk and need I a figured, place to why stay. Not? It's rad. Uh, the new place is going to be fucking awesome. Uh, we should be all in there, what, the next two weeks? Yeah. Somewhere in there? Yeah. 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 So, and if you're, you're wondering why James and I are missing a couple pieces behind us, we've taken them to the new studio. We're trying to make the transition seamless, but obviously shooting shows may not be totally seamless, but you really have to be looking for the seam. Don't fuck it up, James. And don't fuck up your mattress decisions out there. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get yourself a mattress. 36 months. No interest. Pay as you go program. Nothing down either. Like they didn't even fucking charge you for the first month. Crazy. You get a month free and then you're just. The best. The best. And they got a, they've got a huge Memorial Day sale. What I'll say is this, dude. And, and if you're military or first responder, you get 15% off like, like forever, um, which is rad. But the other thing is when they, when they run these Memorial Day sales for us, like our, our, these just regular people, regular civilians like myself, they usually leave it up for like 48 hours afterwards. So go and get, get the shit now because they got a new mattress, uh, bundle packages, sheets, pillows, the whole shit. Uh, I love ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. We're doing a massive deal with them starting in, uh, in June. Uh, we're super stoked to be on board with these guys. Uh, next up, we get StrikeForceEnergy.com. Shabloinkers. Yeah. Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. Put a little uh, Strike Force in the spin drift you know, to keep it going. At night? Why not? Whoa, dang. You know me, James. I'm a night owl. I'm a night owl. I need, I need some energy today. Uh, StrikeForceEnergy.com. Four amazing flavors. Lemon Ridge. Grape. Grape. And a lot of people think I know these, and I don't. Orange. I don't drink the orange that much. What's your flav? Grape. Grapes, yeah. grapes my go-to. Um, and day. if I'm drinking water, I'll go Ridge. Um, I, you know what? That's not true. I do like a little orange in the, in the vodka sodas here and there. Oh, nice. Go to StrikeForceEnergy.com. Kick the can. You don't need any more. Tasty, tiny little tin pouch. Rip it open and squeeze it into every liquid available. Do Rip it. Rip it. Rip it. Um, Strikeforceenergy.com. Promo code REVOLUTION. 20% off. That's good every time. And they ship everywhere around the entire world. Last but not least, Jabe's. Oh. Straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Are you right? Oh, boy. Oh. That was like a roller coaster ride. Man, I choked What a journey. A what a I journey choked that, on that one a little was. Bit. Whew. Man, that one got me, James. Yeah. I'd, I'd back on up. I'd chew that. 
That was so... Straight Razors, sorry. Yeah, straightrazors.com. Shave, be a man in this world, do it. Do it now. <laughs> do it, do it now. Uh, before we black out in here, um, straightrazors.com, great for a pregnant bush. Mm. You know? Yeah, it's, it's warm. It is warm. Promo code revolution, straightrazors.com. It's almost Father's Day. Get your dad a kit. Quit being an asshole, all right? Quit being a little dick, a little dickhead. Get him a, get him a kit to shave with. Um, we have a, we had a real life crime corner happen this weekend. We did. Yeah. You want to tell the people about it? Oh my Point gosh. break style. Summer Swayze. Point break style. And the guy was, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So first for me, it was the first, uh, day out day back. You didn't even want to see the, the, the detective, uh, dust for prints. I'm surprised. <laughs> I was busy. Yo. With the kids. Yeah. But anyway, so woke up. Uh, it was my first day to kind of sleep in. I was going to sleep in a little bit at the beach place. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You were all set. You were like, I'm sleeping in. Oh, I wanna... slept in a separate room than you. Yeah. No, I was like sleeping. The kid was not feeling good. So I was like sleeping with him. Right? Sure. And uh, 630 doorbell. Oof. And I was just like, motherfuck, motherfuck. And it was our... I didn't hear it. I was in a slumber. It was our neighbor that was like... And I was just like, what? Like, duh, like bitchy. Yeah. What? Um, just so you know, your window got smashed out. So did ours. And one other car, they just got smashed out. Doesn't look like they got anything, whatever. And I was just like, what? why'd you call the cops so early? Yeah. The window is smashed out, right? Right. It's going to continue to be smashed out. Yeah, you could have called later. Why are you calling at six? Uh, you know, it's one of those things where... People... Ugh. People... Look, they had shit to do. I understand. Okay. You know, they got to take their car somewhere. They got to drive that fucking thing. On a Sunday or whatever? Yeah, like, you never know. calm down. You never know. You might be meeting a Coke dealer across town. You don't know. Whatever. I Anywho's. Just like, I go, did you call him? Yeah, my wife called him. Okay. So we go down there, yeah. whatever. So uh, for the peeps at home, there was a fucking dude who was 29 years old. We actually have his name because the, 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 I'm going to give a shout out. Fuck him. I'll, I'll say his name on air. I'm going to give a shit. Um, I want to give a shout out to the uh, Carolina Beach PD. They caught this motherfucker in like 16 hours. I And I got a text from the detective. so surprised. Like, was it a slow day or do people out here really follow through so cases? Like, 17 cars this dude had smashed into and it was just with a crowbar. I guess if it was passenger just side and he was just looking for money, like um, nothing really crazy. But uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to read this dude's name out. Um, Sean Lee Club. If I if I shoot you this, can you just put this guy's picture up on the video show? Um, yeah. This looks, well, yeah, this is public record. Who gives a shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is on, like, every website. It doesn't, sure. doesn't really matter. Um, very point break. He looks very, very point break, point break right? you guys. Like, this so, was, this was, it looks like, like the guy who's with Anthony Kiedis in point break. They were beating up uh, Keanu Reeves. Yeah. You know? um, Sean Lee Club. Here's the thing. When your name is Sean, then it's spelled S-H-A-W-N, suspect. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Because that okay. means you had to you know, spell that name your, your whole life. Oh, is it Sean, S-E-A-N? No, no. no. It's S-H-A-W-N. the other way. And it's like, all right, cool. Club. Two Bs at the end of club. It's like, <laughs> why? The last B is silent anyways. That, those customer service spellings. 29 always... years old, white male. And again, we're going to pop a picture up for the video show on YouTube. But again, he looks like a fucking surfer, like a Swayze dude. He wasn't bad looking. Nah, he's not great looking he's either. He's not great looking, but you know. Uh, and, and the list of charges is, I mean, just absolutely hilarious here because it's just 90 And that them. is all for that night? Yeah. Breaking or entering motor vehicle, breaking or entering motor vehicle, and then the bunch of larceny, 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 possession of stolen goods, property, uh, injury to personal property. I don't know what happened there, but uh, whoopsie ding dong. Uh, bond amount, $95,000 for this fucking guy. Sean Lee Club. It's not bad. 
ninety five thousand dollars. Yeah, it's not even a hundo. If 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 a hundred grand, if this motherfucker is is bashing out passenger windows, trying to look for loose change, you think he's got ninety five grand to put up? And I know what you're only putting up. What ten percent of that? Yeah, and your mom's the one that does it, and just like his. Puts this it guy's again. mom's not putting up nine thousand five hundred dollars. You don't put that up. You put Sean up your house. Lee Club, dude. What a piece of shit this guy is. Wow. Crazy. But, uh, dude, shouts, shouts out. Um, yeah, I was really surprised. I've had my car stolen before, and I know you have too, where it's just sort of like, eh, yeah, I mean, yeah. We'll, we'll get, we'll try and at least get your car back, but we're for sure not chasing down who the, who fucking did this. Like, Sergeant Hettinger is his name. Um, and I, I'm going to make him Drinking Bro of the Week, too, on Drinking Bro's podcast. Uh, this this dude, man, was on it. He, dude, he was texting me at night, too. It was just like, hey, Was that man. the detective guy? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and he, dude, well, he's a sergeant, so. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what the classifications are. Is it the, the, the guy that you are. taught that did the prints? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, sergeant Hettinger. And, uh, dude, bossed out. And he even hit me up at, like, 9 o'clock that night. was just like, hey, man. Yes, 9.12. So this happened in the morning, right? Yeah. 9.12, I get a text from him. So you said, what, 6.30 they woke you up? Yeah. 9.12, I get a text from him, made an arrest in your case. Boom. 9.12. What? 12 hours later, dude, homeboy's making an arrest. That's insane. It's that's amazing. Insane. For the night before, here's my question. That's, that's some boss status shit there from Sergeant Hedinger. Somebody asked me this, too, and I was like, so why didn't the alarm go off? What alarm? In our car. I'm surprised by that, too. Is it when you smash windows? Like, they must know something we don't because he's going down the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If one alarm goes off, he's done. Yeah. So it's like there must be something to breaking the window or how he did it or something. I that- don't know. Yeah, one would think your car alarm would go off, right? Right? If your window fucks breaks? Fucks four, yeah. We have a, like, it's a brand new Tahoe, for Christ's sakes. And every car has an alarm, like basically, I'm, past yeah. a certain eight, uh, year. Year. There you um, go. And there's one, there was one underneath, right underneath us, yeah. that got broken into, too, that had to have had an alarm, too. I know. But, uh, dude, boss at 912, dude, on a Saturday night, he sends me a text and says, hey, and I, I don't know him. And there right? were 17 other cars, man. The fact that he did that, amazing, dude. Amazing. Again, crime don't pay, dude. Vicon Dio, Summer Swayze. Like, just fucking learn. Um, but Homeboy is a surfer. And again, I look, did I text you that photo? Yeah. Good. So put, put that up in the show. Sean Lee Club. Just put up the whole rap sheet because there's like 90 charges on there. That way yeah. the audience can see it on the video show. And who's the detective? Uh, Sergeant Hettinger. Good looking dude. Here's the weird thing, dude. So they roll up. In a beach town, you yeah. know, in Carolina Beach, yeah, it was a girl and three dudes. All of them were attractive. Yeah, I know. And I was like, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, what the fuck? Like there was a younger guy too that I was like, uh, that hi. was the dude I was talking to. Yeah, that oh, was Sergeant okay. Hettinger. And I was like, dude, you can't be hot and solving crimes this fast. Like, and the girl was hot too. No, the whole team. And then, I, dude, Dang. like a, a block later, because they were, they were going, you know, to all the neighbors, right? Because um, this happened in like 17 cars. A block later, there was another jacked police officer. And I was like, yo, dude, what is in the water here? It, it, right? I felt like it was like Baywatch, but not lifeguards. Sure. You know? Sure. It was like a hot police force. Yeah. I don't, know, I don't know if there's been a hot police force thing, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there has. Ah, uh, has there? Has there, Jabes? I don't know. I don't either. NYPD Blue? Carolina Beach PD, <laughs> though, brother. They are doing it right down there. And I was just like, shit. All attractive yeah. people solving crimes super fast. Oh. I mean, it was. This is a. This fit into an hour long format. <laughs> Next on CBS. Right? After the blacklist. Stay tuned. For the sexiest, hottest crime solvers in the world. Bravo. Carolina Beach PD. Are you listening, Andy Cohen? Man, doing it right. crew out doing here. Doing it tight, doing it all night. Right? Yeah, the whole shit, all of it, man. Uh, but they, they, they're they on lock here. I will say that, man. All the first responders have got everything on lock here. Oh, yeah. Because then on the way back, 
um, to go to this one party. I saw this huge fire. And we went back to Joe's house. And he's, because uh, he's, he's what, he's like a captain, right? Yeah. yeah. Wilmington PD. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, fire department. Fire department. Sorry. Yeah, Not yeah, PD. Yeah. Duh, duh. Sorry, sorry. Fire department. And uh, blue, I was like, blue. I was like, hey, man, I saw this fire and I didn't want to roll back and see if it was my house on fire. Because let's face it, I couldn't do shit about it anyways, right? You know what I'm saying? You were like, traffic was really bad, so I didn't want to go back and see if it, it was. It, if, you're in, if you've ever been in a house fire, once it's up, you're not doing shit anyways. Sure. You're not doing jack shit anyways. That's true. The script sacks. I was, in a, I was in a really bad house fire in college. Really bad. The entire fucking complex burned down. And okay. I saw these crazy fucks, the script sacks, who were the landlords out there, with one of those tiny green hoses just trying to spray it down to save Mm -mm, a parrot mm -mm. they were trying to save a parrot well yeah (laughs) he had information so anyways watching a a place go up that fast i was like oh well unless there's people in there there's nothing you can do and by the time i got there there's people would be burned up uh my house would be gone too so fuck it at that point you know what i'm saying sure um, mine as well. Will have called. Mine as well have kept raging. Yeah. So I, I hit up Joe and I was like, "Hey man, when I got to Joe's house, I was like, yo, can you just make a call for me and make sure this is like a, it's not my house.'" And he was like, "Oh yeah, no problem. Same thing, dude. Like twenty seconds later, he he had an answer for what it was, and I was like, yeah. fuck. The first responders in this town are lit. It's true. They're with it, man. It's true. You you go to L.A. Dude, That's what I'm saying. I got That's... laughed at in LA. I, oh, I, I've had three at. cars stolen in LA. Yes. I got laughed at, and each one of them, I've gotten back. Like it's it's actually been there. And they then get one it they back fingerprinted for you, yeah. But oh, one they fingerprinted, and I was like, "What the fuck are you doing with the fingerprints?" And they were like, "I don't know, nothing really." Like you know, if it's just right in the system, like this guy, then we'll get him. But it, other than that, we don't have time for this shit. That's right. what they told me in Los Angeles. And I was right. like, the "Fuck, right?" Um, yeah. But homeboys, not only fingerprinting, dude, solving crimes in 12 hours. Los Angeles, I might have sat there with my dick in my hand, dude. Oh, yeah. And there's so many cameras, and they, they can do it there. It just happens so much more. Yeah. <laughs> that they really are. And, and that's what I'm saying. If I got my car broken into, I don't even know if I would call the police in L.A. I'd just be like, fuck. Yeah, right? No, yeah, just get it fixed. There's no way they were like... They would exactly laugh at me. Yeah. It's like Big Lebowski when he's like, do you have any leads? They're like, oh, yeah. 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 We've got a bunch of detectives working on it. Yeah. To get your fucking find out who stole your car. Like, yeah, you're going in tomorrow, right? For the window. Yes. Let me know how much that bad boy is. Oh, obviously. Somebody threw a uh, a brick through a back window of mine uh, in a a car one time. Yeah. That was five hundo. And I was like, shit. I think back windows probably more, but uh, right? I think. I don't know. Yeah. This, this shit hasn't happened to me in a long time where I was just like, what? And at that point, like, just looking at your, because it was, you know, scrounging for shit where you're I just know. like, come on, man. Going through papers and my dirty ass car, like, sorry, yeah, buddy. You've got yogurt. Sorry, Sean. You've got gogurts from the kids that are oh. three weeks old. Right? Yeah. Like, he. Sorry, Sean Lee Club. I like how you just apologize to the criminal on there. Sorry that my car was messy, <laughs> though. You know what I mean? Like, sorry for the state of my car, Sean. <laughs> it's not usually like that. Oh, man. And look, as much as I want to bitch about the heat wave, there was a bunch of crazy tornadoes, too, over the weekend. Yeah. Did you see those things? Jesus Christ. Yeah. And other places are going through some gnarly shit. So it's like, I guess I'll take a warmer pool day, right? Yeah. But... That was the first time I really didn't bitch, like, with everything that had happened. I was like, man, I'm, I'm going to, like, the, the car thing, I was like, I'm going to shake this off, you know? I was more pissed that I had to get up early. That was the, what, pretty much the only thing that I was <laughs> pissed off about. And, you know, I had stuff in the trunk that they could have taken. So, for me, it's, like, got off easy. Yeah. You know? And yeah. I was like, oh, shit, thank God. And for some reason, I put this shit in the trunk and not just somewhere else. Yeah. Not on the seat. So, you know, thank God you had the, the jewel from the Titanic, the original one. Yeah. And I had that (laughs) for some reason. I Rose's body in there. You had the old lady's body. Yeah. uh, After she jumped off the ship, um, in the back of your car, I usually keep it just right next to me in the front. Yeah. 
And for some reason that day, it's weird. It's like, you, you took her you out. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, you don't. <laughs> oh, fuck me, James. Crazy times out there. Those tornadoes were bad, though. Man, it was uh, Jefferson, Jefferson, Missouri. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, where were the other ones? Oklahoma. I feel like Oklahoma is always getting blasted mm-hmm. in Kansas. I don't know what's worse, man, because you live on the coast. Like I've, I feel like I've lived everywhere, visited everywhere, right? Yeah. You live on the coast. I've gone through earthquakes, so have you, in, in the West Coast. Uh, I've gone through tornadoes in, in Georgia. I've gone through two hurricanes, one in North Carolina, one in uh, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Parents went through one in Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could be in these goddamn blizzards that are still going on. And, you know, there's, there's still snowing in, like, Wyoming. Oh, Bert, yeah. Bert Coon said video of that, like, a couple of days ago. And I was like, how is this still snowing there? It's so I don't know up. where to where the... The line is anymore, weather, you know? right? Yeah, it's like fucking crazy, dude. No, not that. It's just it, where do you go that you're safe as you can get away from it? Where you where you're safe and you can get away from from it? <laughs> from all the fucked up shit, probably nowhere. California. Yeah. No, you cannot. Mm. You can, it's earthquakes, May fires. The fires and out. Uh, come on, that's true. That's true. Every but year they get burned up. Yeah, I didn't feel like that when I was like. Growing up there, though, I didn't feel like it was a normal part of your every year culture where it was just like, well, there's another oh, fire, another fire drought, another like fire. That. Yeah, I guess. Crazy. And when you really stop to think about it, because the last time, what was it? Just like like a year ago, your dad was evacuated. Yeah, like three times. Yeah. yeah. In the same, what was it? Same summer or something? In the same, during the same fire. So they'll be like, oh, you can go back. And then it, some kind of gust of wind or Santa Ana's would come through or whatever. And it would just like start back up again. They're yeah. Like, Never mind. Yeah. You actually have to leave again. So he's like, okay, <laughs> you got like, yeah, crazy. Trump's over in Japan right now. Just partying, mm. uh, p- p- partying with, uh, what do you call those wrestlers? The, uh, the heat's sumo? really getting in. Yeah. Watching sumo. sumo shit. Real sumo. Real doing it. He's doing it over there. They had a, by the way, they had these, these models are starting to come out about 2020 because I, f- I forget how close we are yeah. to 2020 because I'm, I'm too focused on the, the Democratic primaries that are coming up Yes. Um, and the debates and all that shit that mm-hmm. I'm like, man, I forget because he, he's not going against anybody. So it's like, oh, all right, all right cool. That's right. We're not going to have to, to worry about it until 2020, right? Yeah. But it's, we're, you know, 14, 15 months out at this point where you're just like, oh shit. All right. We're starting to get there. Yeah. We're starting to get there to the next election. Uh, so, and they're starting to do forecasts on the models already. Um, and the, the dude, all three modelers is what they're called. Didn't think that was a term, but it is modeler modelers. Yeah. What's that? These people who do these fucking models, uh, three forecast modelers. That's a nice one. Isn't that nice? It's almost like a toddler, but you're a modeler. You just do models for a living. Yeah. Adam Levine does a lot of models. He used to for a living. Um, like Zoolander, like a model? No. Like what no, they build, they build models. But like, like when he's looking at the library and he's like, what is this? A library for ants? Nope. No. What model? Uh, they're, they're building models to determine like algorithms and things of, of how the election is going to go. Got it. Forecasts. Got um, it. All three of them that, that have come out so far, uh, Roy Fair, the professor at Yale, um, found that the growth rates of gross domestic product and inflations are probably the, the, the two most important economic predictors. And he also found that incumbency was also an important determinant of the presidential election outcome. He's got Trump winning. Uh, Mark Zandi, the chief economist for Moody's. I mean, Moody's is huge. Moody's analytics is huge. He's looked at 12 models. And he goes, Mr. Trump has won is, is all of them uh, in my predictions. And I was just like, shit. Uh, Donald Luskin of Trend Macroalytics has the same conclusion in his examination. But his is determined on the electoral college and not the general vote. And I was surprised. I was like, shit. And this, this was in a shitty, shitty uh, news source, Axios. Like, they're all super fucking left. I was surprised, and they were like, God damn, that's nuts, man. 
Uh, but we'll see. Because Biden's not going out. He's he's already pulling Hillary's shit right now. Pulling and Hillary shit? Yeah, they're guessing it's because of his age that he's just he's ditching appearances and things like that. He's keeping a, a real low profile. And it's like, well, you, you have, a, be you out have there, a, dude. Yeah, yeah. And you have a better chance to slip up at 70 six I, I keep dating him by three years because i think by the time he's in you're like he's 80 who knows like not quite either way i i, I think he's 76 77 but um uh I, I, they're they're trying to save him they said you know preserve him and it's like hey man you're not gonna be able to do that pretty soon so yeah uh yeah uh, and the other guy i wanted to talk about was the guy who do you remember that guy who got funding he was a triple amputee and he got funding for the wall. He started that GoFundMe yes. campaign. Um, they raised like $23 million. And everybody was like, what the fuck? And then they were like, what the fuck are you doing with all this money? Yeah, so. Here's the thing. They are using it to fund the first private border wall um, ever. And they've, they're building it right now. It's in, it's in New Mexico. So they just put up a half mile section to close the gap. In the border patrol's fence, and they paid for it, and Trump endorsed it and said, "Go ahead." Wow. Yeah, isn't that nuts? I didn't know you could do that. Well, whose property? All through is a it? GoFundMe campaign. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, I mean, you've got to get you've got to get you know permit or what permits, and you got to talk to the city and and border patrol and all that other shit. Like they did. Um, so that, they, yeah, they've already put it up, uh, half a mile has been built. They said there was a bad gap there and the wall where it was old and dilapidated yeah. and a bunch of people were going through and, and, and border patrol was like, Hey man, we're having a bitch of a time with this, uh, for this half mile section. And they were like, great. We use the money and build it up. Fucking built Holy it. Holy shit. Uh, the 18 foot steel bollard wall, uh, is similar to the, 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 the same designs that the border patrol, uh, was already using, uh, sealing off part of the. The, the border and I was like wow the guy's name is Chris Kobach um, he was the one that came out he's the secretary of state in Kansas City and, he, and, and he's also in charge of like their immigration and shit for Trump and he said look we've, we give you our blessing Trump gives you his blessing this is great that's crazy to me crazy so I, you know we I, cause, and the reason why I wanted to bring this up because we talked about this on a show a long time ago was it, would this be the new way to fund government activities that people bitched over, whatever? Not necessarily, because look, this is only a half a mile, and they're building some other. Right. You know, they're using the money other places to build more, more of it. But uh, it's cool that shit's happening and getting done, man. Yeah. I mean, dude, the guy's a man of his words, and I don't even know. Imagine waking up and starting a GoFundMe campaign for a fucking wall, right? Right. For for your country to divide countries. And then not only getting all this money, but then doing it and using it and build and di- like building a fucking wall. Yeah. That's amazing. That is amazing. And it was a really short amount of time, by the way. Yeah. To actually get turnaround on building something. And people were making fun of it and they were like, you know, all these guys are fucking idiots. Whoever donated money is a fucking idiot for doing this. And it's like, hey, man, this this guy this, this, this veteran guy woke up one morning and said, hey, man, I'm going to try to do something good for my country, and then I'm going to go out and do it and execute it. I mean, that is something I can't even wrap my mind around. Right. Because our government can't fund shit right now. This Mm-mm. guy goes on Go, GoFundMe, raises a bunch of money, and then figures out how to pay for construction of a wall and then builds it a half. You know how long a half a mile is? Like, yes. for, <laughs> but, but for real, like, as that far as a mile. wall, yeah. 18 feet high, yeah. Like, shit. That's a good chunk of land. That's not a good chunk of distance. That's uh, nothing to sneeze your snout yeah. about. Is nothing it? Nothing to fucking know. Nothing to fucking sneer your beak at. Yeah. Nothing um, to fucking. And then lastly, uh, the, the revolutionary figure of the day, man. This one really saddens me. Um, because I, I think this guy got a, just, a, just a raw fucking deal, man, in life. Uh, I'm talking about Bill Buckner. Uh, Bill Buckner was the first baseman for the Red Sox. Yeah, Buckner? Yes. During the 86 World Series, the ball went through his leg in game six. Uh, Yeah. And uh, uh, for the the Mookie Wilson hit. And it went right through his legs. They came back and tied and then won. And that was when Boston was in that drought, that curse 
you know, since 1919. Yeah. And um, he got just absolutely killed on that thing. I, they were making Halloween costumes and like, I mean, him, his wife, kids, death threats, all that shit. Oh, and but like, for a very long time. Oh, I, it probably. I don't think it ever ended. I mean, they I, brought him back on the field. It felt like it ended when the Red Sox finally won the World yeah, Series in like 2004. Yeah. But, but that fucking dude had to live with this for close to 20 years. And it's still, to this day, when he passed away, they immediately showed that play. And it was just like, God damn it, man. Um, everybody Horrible. who knew Bill Buckner said he was the nicest guy on the planet, like the greatest dude and like a family man. And uh, he had to go through all this shit. And the weird thing about it was he played 22 years. It wasn't like he played a couple seasons or, you no. know, he played forever. He had 2,715 hits, which usually the 3,000 hit mark gets you into the Hall of Fame. Uh, he just missed it. But it, like all, the, I, didn't, I didn't even know most of these stats of Bill Buckner, mm-hmm. full disclosure, until he right. passed away and I saw it. Right. Just because everybody had shown that play over and over and over again and talked about it for years and years and years and years. That was one of like the first like I think that led into, you know, social media and sports and all that shit where, man, if you choke like that on a on a stage, like good luck. It'll it's haunt you the rest of your life. Sad. It's like a fucking mistake. I know. I know. I know. I know. So but he died. Sad. He was I mean, look, he died at the best age he could, though. Sixty nine. He, he was, was 69. sixty-nine. He was almost sixty nine, but um and it was dementia. Really? Yeah, he had some weird, uh, you know, what wasn't your normal, I had a name for it. Okay. Um, dementia. And uh, there was a reporter that interviewed him maybe three or four months ago for a story. And, and he only gave a couple quotes for the story. And uh, the reporter asked him how he was doing. And he was honest. And he just said, I'm not good, man. Um, so it's sad. I remember when they brought him back, the, the Red Sox did bring him back out onto the field um, yeah. when they won the World's. After they won the World Series and gave away rings and had him throw out the first pitch and everything. And, like, he was crying. I was crying. Like, it was emotional. Like, I, you could feel, like, the weight of the world falling off this guy's shoulders. And it was just, like, man, I can't imagine what that, you know, almost 20 years was like for him. And especially somebody so beloved within the game and the players and everything else. And they were just, like, you know. Yeah. It was an accident. It was a weird play, and uh, they were trying to get that uh, the Cubs guy. Who's the Cubs? Bartman. Guy? Trying to get him. Yeah, he won't. He won't come out. He won't come out of hiding. Almost like Steve that. Bartman. Yeah, it but is. Where I'm just like Bill Buckner was the first Steve Bartman to me. Where it was just like yeah, and him coming out there, you're kind of like, okay, but fuck them. I know. I know. But yeah, when that happened with Bill Buckner, because uh, then he was up in the in the booth. Um, it was an ESPN game. And, uh, man, I, yeah, I no lie, man. I like tears, like I had full tears where I was just like, holy shit. Um, cause it was, you know, again, simple mistake and you could have won the game. You could have won the next game. And it was pu- because he was so nice. So it's like, if you're a dick, I don't think that stuff kind of sticks with you for that long. But if you're a nice person, like stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. can really fucking eat at you probably. I'm sure there was a certain personality type that that would have been like, fuck you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, there's some people who can separate it or whatever. This was just so much hatred because they were, you know, a whole entire city was waiting for 68 years at that point to win a World Series and then, you know, a slow roller to first base. He scoops it up. They win the World Series and it's it. But, uh, man. And then to go another 20 after that, like, because a lot of fans are pissed off if, you know, their parents die or Mm -hmm. uh, kids or whatever happens and they don't get to see a moment like that. And man, I felt for the guy. I've always felt bad for Bill Buckner. Right. And then on top of it to hear that he died at 69, I was just like, fuck, young and of dementia. I know. That's a way to go, right? Shit. Is it? what, What happens with dementia? Well, it's just sort of, it's just, it's sad because you, you lose yourself before you lose everything else. Gotcha. So before you die, you're like, you're gone. You get aggravated. It's like, you know, it's not, it's just not good because you basically lose the person 
a couple years before you lose them. Shit. No, that sucks. And they end up like, yeah, just hurting themselves, hurting other people. And, um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, look, it's, it said his wife and his entire family was, was around him. And, um, yeah. Uh, they said he died peacefully. So, um, a bunch of people writing, you know, an article, uh, just about that, how he shouldn't be defined by one play. Shouldn't, but he was. Right. Um, and uh, this is one that hasn't gone away all day, this story. Because yeah. it's just, man, I think, I think the reason why, and we talk about this all the time on the show, is like, you know, usually somebody dies, you trend for a couple hours, and then it's over. This one isn't going away. Mm-hmm. I think this is one where everybody just genuinely felt bad at what an asshole they were toward right. him. And it was just like, man. Right. So, uh, either man. way, RIP, best one, dude, if you, and if you haven't looked him up, one of the best stashes in the biz, man. Oh, legend. Legendary status on the stash game. Legendary status on that stash game. My man. Bill Buckner. RIP, man. That sucks. That fucking sucks. Should have got a better hand, man, uh, than that one. Either way, Jabes, we made it through the heat today. Proud of you. Oy. Proud of you. Kept a, kept a nice smile on your face. You were real smooth with your techniques. Oh, boy. That's a video show face that you're going to want for keepsake in the rest of your life. No, James, don't do it. Don't do it. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.